Hi, so welcome to the lesson of the week for thisisclassicalguitar.com. And today we're looking at Prelude Number no. 4 by Villa Lobos. And this is a really great piece um, both for professional performers and also for students. Um, intermediate students kind of looking for the, a jump to a more advanced level and more mature repertoire. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll just go through each section. You probably know the piece. And if you want the sheet music, um, I put a link in the YouTube info section or on the website. But I think I'll go through each section just talking about some things that I, I think are really important. So um, let's just dive right in and we'll start with the, the introduction. Maybe I'll just actually give you a, a couple bars from each section so you know the piece. Um, it starts with like a, a lento kind of cantabile opening. into an animato section which is much more um, intense. <laughs> um, it, it goes on and on and then there's a harmonic section. And then it goes, returns to the beginning at the end of all that. So kind of four main sections to the piece. So let's talk about each section. So the opening section, um, I think there's two things that you should really focus on in this section. Um, I think the first thing is rhythm. Um, and then the second thing is orchestration or, you know, coloring the lines on the guitar. Kind of the way a conductor would want to, or, or a composer would orchestrate their music, um, or a conductor would get the orchestra to be balanced in certain ways to bring out certain musical qualities, you want to do the same thing on the guitar. So it marks the uh, beginning as cantabile and just like in a singing style and it's lento, but a lot of performers, um, and especially students, play this piece in a little too abstract of a way. I think that you should really go through the piece counting, um, counting the beats out, making sure that you have the right number of beats and that the notes are falling in the right place. Because it's easy to make the opening very like spacious and just kind of abstract, but it's, I don't think it's as much as you might think. So if we're counting, we're thinking like one, two, three, one, two, Fermata, so you can let it sing for a little bit longer. One, two, three, four. So that's the opening section, and with counting. So um, because there's, uh, he doesn't say anywhere like rubato or something like that. I think he's kind of worked the spaciousness into the piece, and because you kind of want to go from the beginning all the way to that end point saving your um, spaciousness for where he throws in fermatas. So um, my advice would be to make sure you're actually playing the rhythm correctly there, which lots of people just don't do. They're kind of just treated in a more free way. Um, maybe once you have it like really locked down, you can like stretch it a little bit. You can see I'm like stretching up time a little bit. Especially enjoying those ties. So you can kind of uh, stretch it a little bit, but make sure it's in the framework and the structure of the actual rhythm that's written down there. 
Okay, and then the second thing I want to talk about the opening was the um, kind of orchestration idea. I think that if you think of Villalobos' music, um, he's written a lot of orchestral music and chamber music. Um, and in particular, um, I think for this piece, the sound of the cello really comes to mind. You know, this kind of... With all those low lines... Or, sorry, that was wrong. those really sustained dark um, lines I think are are very reminiscent of it, like a cello in an orchestra and then you can have that deep dark flowing legato cello line and this kind of softer percussion idea happening here um, you might if you really can't make the contrast between the two um, as intense as you want, you could go kind of like Ponticello with those, just so they're brighter, glassier, or you could go warm, but I think that would mix and mush it up a little bit. So um, keep those two things maybe a little bit separate. So let's move on to the intersection. Now the intersection is, is crazy. Um, it has all these arpeggios, right? And they move around the guitar. Uh, sorry. Um, one thing that I think even professionals sometimes don't do is make it quite as musical as it could be. Um, the bottom line is marked with cantabile, so it's like in a singing style. I think the composer specifically saying, bass line should be musical. So even though there's all this activity with the arpeggio, I think that um, um, I think the idea that you're just gonna like play through it as like a virtuosic display, I think it's a bad idea. I think you should actually try to have a little bit of this strong or like tension resolution, tension resolution, strong make. All the way to your destination point, which is that top E there. Uh, sorry. So, um, even on the way down, uh, I think that that uh, tension relaxation. Um, there should be some kind of phrasing in there, and also like a shape overall. section um, you don't have to just like blare through it with a metronome I mean practice it with a metronome for sure but um, especially when you get down to this um, lower material uh, where does that happen you know there's all these beautiful melodies in the bass line And they shouldn't be ignored just because it's like a fast display. It's really easy just to like try to play those arpeggios as intensely as possible. I've seen like people play them so fast that like I can't hear any music in them. Like, um... you know, this kind of idea. That kind of idea that you would just like blaze through it. Um, I just don't think it sounds like that good. Um, I mean, in the hands of an excellent uh, pro, of course, they might be able to do both, go fast and play it very musically. But I would caution the student, in particular the student, 
um, to be to make sure that you're making that bass line really sing in a nice way. So I won't lecture you on that anymore. Um, let's go into that third section, the harmonics. Let's talk about this. Um, this is the same musical lines as the opening, right? So this is the same as... So again, even though it's so airy and so beautiful and bell-like, it doesn't mean that you should make it completely abstract. I think there's, there's still rhythm, right? It's one, two, three, Count out loud while you play. It's a really useful thing. I know the time signatures are changing, and like you even saw me miss almost miss the first beat. I almost called it four. But you want to be able to count out loud while you play so that you know for a fact that you're playing in time. And play the metronome too. Um, you might, I mean, eventually you're gonna to want to turn the metronome off and have some space in your performance, but I mean some rubato, but um, not too much. I mean, I think it's pretty good when it has like a regular beat. Um, if you're reading off the Royal Conservatory version, if you're in Canada in particular, people are using those books a lot, careful, there's a misprint on the very last one. They ask you to play the top string, but that's incorrect. Um, it's the very last harmonics um, are strings 6 and then 4, 3, and 2. Um, like the Eshig edition suggests. So just be careful of that. There's just a misprint in those books. Um, then the piece comes back with the opening section. And at the very end of the section, it's, it's exactly the same, at the very end, instead of going to the automato, it goes with this final chord. Um, it's kind of like G major chord or E minor chord, but depending on how you think of it, um, you can think of it as um, an E minor chord with, uh, with the third and the bass and the seventh, but you could also think of it as a G major chord with sixth, so that, um, I consider the piece an E minor, so it's an E minor chord. But, um, you don't have to roll it. Um, it doesn't have a roll listed. It has a forte, just with all the notes played, which can be nice too. But I, I, I do like to roll it. just to match the mood a little bit more in my mind. But you can see lots of performances of the piece and uh, get, get ideas from others. Um, just be careful on that last chord. You're letting these harmonics ring. Don't touch any of the strings because they're ringing, right? So position your fingers above that chord and then put them down one at a time so that those harmonics ring all the way um, until you play all those, that new chord. Um, it's just like a very magical moment and you want to make sure you don't um, just cover it up. So um, I think that's just about all I want to talk about in that piece, but the main things are that I would go through it and just make sure it's really, uh, from a musical standpoint, you have all the fundamentals there. Rhythm, um, some dynamics, um, you work out your tempos, um, 
and make sure that musically speaking, like that you're phrasing and you're treating it all melodically. You're not just like, like I said, just blasting away at those arpeggios. And then once you've done that, you can just relax all those factors a little bit and you can stretch the time a little bit, use some rubato, but your, the structural elements of the piece will still be there. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson and I'll be doing one, a new one every week. So subscribe to the YouTube channel or the website. I also have a newsletter, which you can subscribe to, which comes out once a week. Thanks.